Uh, well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Chad Hester. I have been a web developer for now over two decades, which seems like a flash. <laughs> I work for a company called Unleashed Technologies based out of Columbia, Maryland. I'm what you call a solutions architect, which I'm sure you're familiar with. I've been working in the Drupal community for about 12 years. Uh, as many people that work in development, sometimes you shift over to the strategic side of things. I do have a, a background in design as well. And I'm a big advocate of open source software and user experience. So some of that's baked into what it is that we're presenting here. But uh, today's presentation is a bit more oriented on business strategy and how that can influence your entire team. So is this a presentation for you? Always a good place to start. Uh, we want to use data to inform design strategies and priorities. Uh, we want to have something that helps develop a growth engine. And if this is an unfamiliar concept to you, we'll touch a little bit on that. We do want to make adjustments and continuous improvements to whatever it is that we're beholden to, whether it's a project, initiative, or a business, uh, just making sure that we're heading at a good trajectory. And we also want to work as a team with a common mission. So to do that, uh, one of the key things that we can do is put together a framework to guide that success. That's what we're looking at today. Trying to get out of the buzzword side of things and focus more on the operational side of things. And very frequently, if you work with an agency or if you work in a department, you can find yourself kind of turning wrenches, not necessarily knowing why. It's that uh, story of, you know, a bricklayer. Why are you laying bricks? Oh, I'm building a cathedral. Well, if you're wrong and you're really supposed to be building a garage, <laughs> then you might be building the wrong thing. So we don't turn wrenches. Instead, we grow and we need to put something together that helps us grow as a team. So where do we start? So we, we touched on this idea of engines of growth. And this is a concept that some of you may be familiar with. And if you're not, well, Welcome to what this is. This comes from the Lean Startup, and there are many books and uh, premises that base themselves off of these concepts, but it identifies three engines of growth. And this is something that you can use, but you don't have to. Uh, this is an option. And it tries to break down measurements in things that align with one of the engines of growth that typically relate to what it is that you're building or your business model. Uh, typically, you'll only align with one of these at a time, but you can move between them. So I'm not going to explain what these are. I would encourage you to read that book if you want to learn more. But this does influence what it is that we could potentially measure as a team to be a little bit more sensitive to that engine. And we want to start off with a hypothesis. So a performance measurements framework allows us to build more effective, continuous improvements using data-driven learning as a team. Now, I call this a hypothesis because, well, we need to prove that it works. We're responsible to that as a team. So what we're focused on today uh, is the top portion of this diagram that we have here. Uh, we need to analyze business needs, user needs, uh, develop key performance indicators, key system attributes, and then work on this performance measurements framework as a team, potentially having a KPI dashboard to gain visibility which introduces us to what's called the growth cycle. So the growth cycle is consistent with what was uh, taught in Lean Startup and what a lot of businesses use to create a growth engine. So it's the build, measure, learn cycle. So measurements are a very vital part of learning. At any point, you can kick yourself out of that growth cycle if there is some sort of change in strategy. And you'll have visibility on that as you learn and as your business changes, as your users needs change. So why a performance measurements framework? Well, we want to have unified team goals. If I asked each of you, if we had a theoretical uh, business that we're working in, a uh, movie theater is a common example I use because we can all familiarize ourselves with that. Each one of us will have similar answers, but similar is not good enough. We need alignment. So by talking about these things and establishing something together, we all have some common trajectory or beacon that guides us. We want that to be a measurable impact, not just speculation, not emotion. And we want to learn together, not just in a vacuum or on an island. 
So what's involved? What's your role? What's your team's role? Well, first is key performance indicators. Now, I'm sure many of you may have heard key performance indicators. You may even use them in your business, but it's also a buzzword and kind of leaves a bad taste in some people's mouth. I don't want to just profess buzzwords. Instead, I want you to take away from this something that is impactful, that gains alignment with the team and helps you head in a good direction. There's also key system attributes. These are the characteristics of the thing that you're building. Maybe it's a website, maybe it's a product, maybe it's just a business as a whole, but the things that you can point at and say, this should help prop up these key performance indicators. I believe that that should be the case, but it's okay to be wrong. These are your hypotheses. And then creating a document that captures this information for the team to be able to monitor and manage. It's okay, it's a living document. You can update these things. And all of this should help guide your growth as a team. So the estimated effort, because while well, these things cost money, they take time, they take effort. Typically it takes roughly about 20 hours to do this initial setup of this uh, set of KPIs, the KSAs, if that's something that you're pursuing, and the documentation. Anything with dashboards or integrations is a different effort if that's something that you'd like to do. And then of course, measurement implies that there's something routine. So putting together the performance measurement framework is that initial effort, but then monitoring this month over month does take effort. So about four hours a month. Who's involved? <laughs> if you're an agency, um, of course you have clients. And if you work on a retainer model, which I would encourage uh, doing, smaller retainers, obviously you're not gonna be able to expend so much budget monitoring things month over month, and that's okay. Smaller retainers, maybe maintenance clients, uh, the KPIs alone will help still serve as a beacon for what's important and how to prioritize things. I, again, the movie theater example, maybe profits, ticket sales, concession sales, those sort of things are very important. And being aware of that and sharing that with the team is still important enough to impact design decisions. On a larger team, you should be a bit more proactive about these things. You should be measuring them and hitting that growth cycle, the build, measure, learn cycle. Stakeholders. Uh, oftentimes in project management, we have this concept of late thrashing, and that could be detrimental to the health and success of uh, an initiative or a product or a business. So we want to make sure that people that have a stake in something are participating very early and routinely. Any subject matter experts, it's good to have input from uh, people, and we'll explain that participation in a bit, but acknowledging and identifying who participates is very important. Users, get them involved. Let, let's see how things behave. Let's learn together and study them. Of course, anyone else that we identify as uh, performance measurements framework participants, the people that we identify in that document together should also, of course, participate. So let's put this together. There's an intake process that occurs, and, and if we have time, I'll go over some actual examples of what this looks like. So first, let's start off with business needs and goals we can take a quick inventory of what that actually is. This is a loose conversation. There's no right or wrong, but collecting those and then trying to prioritize them. What is the biggest business need? Okay, what's the next biz business need? Do you have numeric goals for those needs? So profits may be a percentage or a dollar amount, or uh, attendance may be a count or a capacity percentage. We also want to acknowledge user needs and behavior. We don't work in a vacuum. We are providing a service to an audience of some sort and we want to empathize with them. So this is that user experience side of things or that human centered design side of things. We want to acknowledge the data sources. So when we talk about measurements, we want to know that the data sources are reliable and collecting information in a way that we can digest. So just identifying those pretty early on helps us acknowledge any work that might be required in setting those up. Once we have this information, it's important to triage this as a team, collect it, and then review it to try to figure out what it means. So reviewing those intake notes that you've had as a team to try to make sense of them. And use a worksheet. Try to come up with a template so this is repeatable if you are an agency 
or use a worksheet at least that is collaborative across their team so you can update it and ideate over time with your team. Document what those business goals are. Document any conversion funnels because conversion funnels are very important to the health of your business and the success uh, related to user journeys. And document any critical pathways. This is sometimes confusing between funnels and pathways. Pathways are a bit more particular to the medium. So if I have a website, what's a critical pathway on that website? Well, maybe it's purchasing uh, movie tickets, that type of thing. Identify your audience. This can be broad segments like moviegoers, advertisers, families. You can get into sub-segments like college students, depending on how you're targeting things, but acknowledge them, be aware of them. Document any specific user activities and tasks as well. Just know the, what the behavior is on whatever it is that you're building. Maybe it's a, an actual restaurant, maybe it's a website. There's a lot of things that you can build, but just be aware of what people can do with it. And then work as a team to ideate on the key performance indicators and the key system attributes that are meant to support those things. Once you tease out those ideas, try to work as a group to find out what's viable. It's okay, some of the ideas may not work today or may not work at all, but at least you had the idea, you documented it, and you can reference that again in the future if it is actually a good idea, but not yet. And identify the supportive K KSAs. Once you figure out what KPIs you wanna start with, make sure that you understand what key system attributes make sense to prop that up. And then document that. We wanna make sure that we have a reference over time. I know my memory's not that, that great <laughs> over the course of months, if not years with some opportunities, initiative, projects, businesses. So documenting it helps with team alignment again. Uh, in that document, review the key performance indicators with any stakeholders. Once your team has established what makes sense, review those as well as the key system attributes. Make revisions as a team, totally fine. This is a living document. This is not meant to be a one and done. It should never be thought of as that. And then allow the key performance indicators to influence the design process. Your design team, your development team, the whole team should be aware of what this is. It's that participation and this is very important. It's also important to acknowledge that key system attributes are just hypotheses in most cases. And even if you have proven something through data, validated your hypothesis, that may change over time. Your audience needs may change. And it's important to revisit those on a routine basis, just as much as you're monitoring the things that you're measuring for KPIs, monitor how things are performing for the things that you've built. So the document that we want to put together, this is a short document. It is meant to be shared with anybody on the team, executives, uh, stakeholders, anybody that participates in the success of what it is that you're doing should be able to read this document. But we know people don't read. <laughs> so we want this document to only be a few pages long. We want to indicate how KPIs are measured because, well, it needs to be repeatable, so we need to have some reference there. That includes whatever those data sources are. So perhaps I use Hotjar for a net promoter score to be able to track the um, KPI for improving customer satisfaction. That's a very common industry way of doing that. Well, document that, say hot jars the thing. Say what pages hot jar is showing that NPS question. If you know what the numeric goals are for each KPI, maybe it's you know 20% profit, 25% uh, is our stretch goal for profit, document that because that allows us to understand what our baselines are. If you don't know what the baselines are, that's absolutely normal and fine. Take the first three to six months and monitor the trends. Try to establish what a baseline is. Do some market research and understand what other similar businesses are doing with whatever it is that you're studying related to these key performance indicators. Remember, the key system attributes are either validated or hypotheses. And something that is validated one day may change over time. So we're all responsible as a, as a team to try to prove our hypotheses hypotheses or disprove them rather. If they're proven wrong, then we need to be prepared to remove those key system attributes in favor of something that might be more productive or effective. 
identify who's participating in your routine meetings. This is really important because you want that participation. Sometimes it's just a matter of checking your vitals. That's what key performance indicators should be, is just the vitals, the health of the thing that you're working on. And then schedule things. Typically the schedule that I would recommend for most clients uh, as someone that works for an agency is monthly is you're just monitoring the data, watching the trends. You're not reacting, you're restraining yourself from reacting, but you're keeping visibility on things. And this is usually just to make sure that things are calibrated. Quarterly is a little bit more short term. What have we done in the past three months? What are we planning to do in the next three months? This might be small campaigns, easy build items, that type of thing. And then long term might be more yearly meetings. What have we done in the past year? How did that work out? What are the big bets and investments that we might want to make to try to steer the ship in a different direction or just make general improvements? Define the objectives, what we just went over. The, the objectives for each meeting may differ, but you know that you're meeting every single month. You get into that cadence with your team. If some, somebody's out sick, still hold the meeting. Don't delay it. And that's so that the whole team is, it, they know that they're going to see this monthly. So you need to prepare for these measurements. In some cases, these are manual. In other cases, you can wire things to a dashboard and automate a few of those things, but at least have a plan. Configure those data sources. Make sure that Hotjar is doing what it needs. If you have a association management system or a constituent management system or an ERP or any data source that you have, just be aware of what it collects and make sure that it's, it's collecting it properly. Set up a dashboard. Now, oftentimes, uh, these sort of leadership and strategic books that, that we're able to read will say, you know, KPI dash dashboards should be more public. And when I say public, I don't mean necessarily public to everybody, but at least to your internal team and any stakeholders. Don't hide this data. Don't be embarrassed by this data. This, is, this allows us to learn together and figure out how to work together. But it's not a free-for-all. It doesn't make it the highest paid person's opinion or the design by committee. We do want to avoid those two things. Typically, data that we collect, uh, it, it, it can be inaccurate. It can be unclear. If I look at the numbers, I may not know what that means. So strive as a group to make sure that anybody looking at that data understands it and make sure that when it's represented, it's represented accurately. Schedule those updates. If there's no automation behind pulling routine measurements, then somebody's gonna have to do that manually and that should be on the calendar. And it's something that people should get ahead of. Don't sacrifice uh, things because you just don't have time. Make the time for this. It's that important, not for a specific person, but the whole team. And then routinely review what it is that you've measured and schedule a, a team presentation for that opportunity. First, do a little internal evaluation, just a small team, the team that's responsible for collecting those measurements and taking a look at those measurements. Prepare a presentation. This is a very quick way to actually disclose information to all stakeholders that are participating in that meeting. Gather the measurements and put them in into that presentation. Make sure that they're accurate. So, you know, this is time that you need to spend and separate your observations from your recommendations. Very frequently, um, us as human beings, I'm guilty too, will mix facts with opinions. You really want to separate those out. When you're measuring uh, data, you want to represent that data factually by itself and, uh, and acknowledge that. You'll get to the point where you can make recommendations. But as a team, spend the first portion of the slides in your presentation just acknowledging where things currently are. Resist that reacting to the data. The data is the data, and it may prompt an emotion, but you need to resist that as a team. Focus instead on the trends. Just because a number goes up one month, you may be misinterpreting that data. Maybe the data was poorly collected. Maybe it is accurate, but reacting isn't necessarily a healthy um, behavior pattern. Instead, the behavior pattern should be studying trends month over month and just keeping your eye on these vitals. You weren't doing it before, maybe you were, but kind of loosey-goosey. Instead, focus on what the data is trying to tell you. And then make recommendations. 
So a, a few common recommendations that we might make after looking at the trends and studying the data and maybe even doing some um, deeper research and other measurements is take a look and see whether or not the data is actually calibrated properly. Make recommendations if it's not. That's okay, month over month, you're dialing it in. The first three, six months, sometimes even a year, may just be about calibrating the data so that way thereafter it can be a bit more informative and helpful. Spend time, so other recommendations, is to spend time testing and validating the hypotheses that you had and those key system attributes, the things that are supposed to prop up the KPIs, are they? What have you done to test it? What can you do to test it? So your team should routinely go through that list and see if there's something that you can prove wrong or see if it's not helpful. Identify any research opportunities. Maybe you're not ready to build something or design something. Maybe you need to learn about a new API. Maybe you need to learn a little bit more about uh, a business strategy, or maybe you need to do research on uh, your audience, market research. You can, of course, do backlog recommendations. So if you're familiar with Agile, uh, the backlog is just your list of tasks. And I think it's really important uh, to consider Agile in this process because it really promotes that idea of constant growth and priorities. But uh, if you know immediately, hey, if I connect this website that we built for a movie theater to this other third-party system that helps us manage ticketing, well, then our operating expenses go down and our, our ability to sell tickets more rapidly goes up. Well, that's, that's a good bet. That's a key system attribute. And that's something that your team can build immediately if they understand how to do that. So again, you want to enter that build, measure, learn cycle as a team. We're all participating in this and we all have different perspectives, which is precisely why you want so many different people participating in this process because those perspectives are important. Just because you don't agree with somebody doesn't mean that their uh, perspective isn't valuable. And we can pivot. So perhaps a movie theater is put together, and I'm sure some of you uh, go out to movies, not recently, but <laughs> when you do, uh, you may have encountered dinner theaters or theaters that serve alcohol or a slight change in the business model. Well, what does that do to the things that we're measuring? What does that do intrinsically, perhaps, to the website that, we're, that we have to prop it up? So maybe if you have a dinner theater, what's the menu? You need to support that. That helps attract people. So as with any of these practices uh, that we're trying to implement, the things that we're trying to operationalize, this is not something that is a unique novel idea that just came out of my brain. This came from different influences. So in the community, I usually have mentors for user experience, business, things like that. Your entire team should have these things. Attend social events like Nerd Summit. We're here. We're learning from each other. Try to participate, study, practice. Oh my God, practice is so important. Reading a book is not nearly as good as trying to implement these things. The idea sounds great, but when you get into it, you're gonna find that it doesn't behave the way you expected. And it's that experience that helps make you more proficient. Read things like Lean Startup and other similar sort of books to help you with team strategy and uh, business. There's a certification from HubSpot that really focuses on this type of behavior as well, this idea of growth-driven design. Agile practices, become a scrum master, understand the impact on the team and how you're organizing things, how you're growing. It's not a one and done. If I planted a garden in my backyard, I have certain objectives, but I could get aphids on my tomatoes and I have to adjust. But the yield that I'm trying to seek is because of the effort that I'm constantly putting in season over season. Same thing with a website. It's also important when you're working with a team to acknowledge what sort of questions you're trying to answer. All too often, we grab a hammer and we're looking for a nail. That's the proverbial how. The KPIs and the KSAs, they serve a purpose along this line. But really, we don't, again, we don't work in a vacuum. It's very important to understand that a website is for people. Who are those people? If you don't know that answer, you're not ready to get to how. Why? Why are we building this website? What purpose does it have? 
what impact does it have on society? What impact does it have on the success of our business? Establish those things and the KPIs can help you do that. What? What is very similar to how, but it doesn't tell you how. So this is where things like user story mapping comes in handy. That defines the what, but it doesn't tell you how to build it. There are different ways to build it, different technologies, different strategies. So we can pause for a moment now. I hope this shifts over to the correct screen. I'm gonna unshare and then reshare. See if that works. So I have a few examples here. So the first is the document that we were just talking about. This is the document that the team is responsible for. You'll notice that it has a version up here. Now the example that I'm showing you is for that movie theater, because I think we can all understand that business model from a general perspective. This is the final result. And it doesn't mean that it can't change. It can absolutely change. We have our key performance indicators. We describe them. We talk about our goals. We try to highlight the data source uh, for these things. I'm skimming through this. And I'll share these uh, notes as well for the, for the team. So if we're going to have a little repeat, um, it will be in, in the slides and in, in Slack. Uh, the key system attributes that we list out, some are validated. For example, um, a website user interface responding in under one second. That's something that's well studied. And, and I can cite links there. Noting who participates. Noting how measurements are done and what sort of schedule we have, what, what the intent of each meeting would be. So that's, that's the document, that's it. You can print this out, you can hold on to it, you can update it as a team, you can reference it as you're doing design or the month over month, but it's important to document these so everybody is on the same page, both figuratively and literally while you're collaborating. But where did this come from? This is the result, this is where you're trying to go. Well, we can do this exercise. We talked about the intake process. So typically what I'll do with clients as, as an agency is I'll talk to them about their income sources. This can either be uh, dollar values or currency rather, or a percentage. The importance to me as a strategist is to understand what is the biggest source of income. I don't wanna hurt that. I wanna prompt that. I wanna help that grow unless you're trying to shift the percentage. And it's okay, you can acknowledge that with the people you're working with. And what are your expenses? Operational expenses have an impact on a business as well. You don't wanna increase your expenses. You do wanna to try to decrease those where possible, but you want awareness of those things because it impacts what you're doing. Document any conversion funnels that you have. Again, this is that, uh, that movie theater sort of example. So you see ticket sales, maybe private events, a reward program, uh, maybe becoming an advertiser or a sponsor. Some of these might be ideas. Some of these might be active. Just document them. This is that team collaboration. What are the goals? Increase profits, increase attendance ratio, increase concession sales, maybe reduce concession costs, and we can document things numerically. Now, I didn't fully fill out this spreadsheet, but you can see this is a template that we put together. Who's your audience? Remember, we were asking who participates in this. We're building something for people. So just acknowledging that is very important, and you can, tweak this a little bit. This is not meant to be personas or anything like that, but it's just a light touch and go acknowledging who that is. Critical activities. What are people doing on this theoretical website for a movie theater? Well, they could purchase a ticket, view show times, contact the theater, get directions, maybe purchase a reward program membership and book a private event. Those are our ideas and we can even prioritize those. And what that does is it influences the ideas that we come up with for key performance indicators. So for this movie theater, we came up with four. We can increase profits, uh, we could improve customer satisfaction, improve attendance ratio, and increase concession sales. And we note where that's measured. But you'll notice that I also have these other two that are a maybe. Now, if you wanted to work more in that lean startup side of things, remember it has three different engines of growth. In the case of a movie theater, I would recommend the sticky engine of growth, the, the retention of repeat business. So if you measure the uh, repeat attendance, maybe you can do that by instituting a reward program. And that can at least track a portion of that repeat business to get, you know, again, finger on the pulse. You don't need the full data to get sample data to extrapolate how you're doing, the health of your business. And then try to reduce the cost of acquisition. 
So this is something that could happen, but notice that it's reliant on that reward program. There are other ways to measure this. So understand your business. If you do want to use a growth model or a growth engine where you're monitoring those sort of measurements, these could also become key performance indicators. So the key system attributes, what, what do we have in mind there? So recall we said uh, responding under one second. Well, that's something that is well studied. Uh, Nielsen Norman Group has an article about website response times and SitePoint actually has a decent article on the psychology of speed. So those links are in here. I'll share uh, these documents with the group. But we can identify other things for this theoretical movie theater website that may make sense. So maintaining global navigation options relevant to landing pages for each critical pathway, buying tickets, checking show times, all of those are critical pathways that we established earlier. Uh, provide a reward program. Let's get started with that. Even if we can't measure it immediately because we don't have members yet, that's a direction that we'd like to go in. And it's a theory. It's okay, we can be wrong. Uh, and we have a column over here to track what we've validated. Uh, anything that's approved by the team gets marked as such. Ideas, we at least capture our ideas. We don't need to include these. The website might do these things, but we're identifying the key system attributes that help prop up those KPIs. Uh, a measurement dashboard. We have a client, uh, Dixon. They are uh, an industrial manufacturer. So a, a key performance indicator is posted in their dashboards. So we can see leads coming in, we can see sales, uh, their net promoter scores uh, month over month. This helps us monitor the activity of this business. Now it hasn't been updated in a month, so it's a little bit out of date, but this is the concept of sharing a, a dashboard across multiple groups. So that's, that's really the gist of um, how this works. Uh, I, I did wanna point out, I, I do work for an agency. If you wanted to work with us or for us, uh, you can certainly get in touch with me um, or our group. Start at unleash-technologies.com is the email address for this. And if you wanna define this presentation, uh, here's a bit.ly link for that. Uh, I'll try to put together a bit.ly link for those example documents that I provided. And thank you everybody at the Nerd Sub for the opportunity to talk. Uh, we can move on to any sort of questions and answers at this point. They're gathering their thoughts. <laughs> sure. And if anybody has any challenges that you're facing right now in business or with a project or anything like that, and you'd like to consider implementing something like this, I, I'll be the first to tell you, it's hard to operationalize things that come from business strategy books or uh, certifications like growth driven design. They try very hard to provide you something that is malleable in different scenarios. But without practicing those things, it gets a little bit hard. Uh, so the first question is, how do you use Google Analytics, my business, and that dashboard in this work? Uh, so yeah, that, I think that's a good question. Um, and I think that also touches on an important factor. So we were talking about key performance indicators. This is really, um, something that requires a bit of root cause analysis sometimes. So whenever somebody mentions Google Analytics, oftentimes I, I'm reminded that people tend to go after metrics to help indicate success. So page views, bounce rates. This is known as, in our industry, the vanity metrics. Um, they aren't necessarily telling you the health of your business. They're just telling you a number. And those numbers are helpful when doing research and learning about the behavior of people and what it is that you might want to adjust, but they can also lie to you. They don't necessarily tell you the health of your business. They're not the root of success. So you can ask yourself questions, the, the why five times approach. So you can say, well, why do I think that page views need to be up? Well, because I want to increase visibility on show times and sales for tickets. Okay, why do I wanna do that? Because I want to increase profits. There's your KPI. 
And that was a very simple example. Sometimes it's a little bit more challenging. But uh, yes, on occasion, we will use Google Analytics and tie that to things that we're tracking inside of a website if it does have um, some sort of ties to either the KPIs or metrics that we're tracking related to those KPIs. It's okay to have both in a large dashboard. Um, and then the dashboard itself, uh, typically we'll use the um, Data Studio from Google, but you can use Power BI or any other platform that makes sense. Um, the only part of your question that I don't understand is um, the my business part. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're referring to. Are there any other questions from the group? Any other ways that we can help you uh, improve through measurements and working as a team? Um, yeah, do you have any suggestions on where to go to look up some more information? I'm actually trying to build out a KPI program um, in our strategy and ops team. So I just like to be able to have some stuff at my hands as I'm going through this process. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's a really good question. Um, I would recommend uh, if you go to HubSpot, HubSpot has a number of certifications. I'm not an affiliate of theirs. <laughs> I just use them as a reference and I am um, certified in growth driven design. So I've, I did the course when it was, I think it was like a 17 hour course. It's now a four hour course. Um, well, they have two versions of it, but the four hour version, I would at least start with that one. Uh, I think it's really important to try to find these types of industry standards. Uh, so growth driven design is one. Um, another, if, if you're responsible on more of the operational, the tactile uh, side of things, um, it would be helpful to be aware of agile practices and anything to help with continuous improvements. So, um, Scrum is what I'm certified in. There are a lot of other things like Kanban uh, that you can also look at. There are a lot of certification programs for that. Usually it's like a day or two course, but it's very valuable for teams, especially um, project managers or other leaders to take those courses to understand how to manage teams. But more on the strategic side, uh, the book Lean Startup is, is uh, probably one of the main references that people use in, in business for this type of thing but there are a lot of other related books to Lean Startup. Uh, so uh, I think, I, I, shoot, I cannot remember <laughs> the, the one that I'm thinking of. It's, I, I can see it in my brain. And I know that has the word entrepreneurship in, in the title along with Lean. Um, and there's also the follow-up book uh, called the, the Startup Way. And if you're in an agency, um, especially, it has a lot more applicable things to um, web-based things. So that's, that's another good resource. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, taking a look in the chat, see a clarification. I, I'm, I guess I'm thinking about how changes in your business listing, like adding more keywords, et cetera, result in improvements in website hits and SEO rating. And if that makes sense in terms of a metric to track, I see what you mean. So really, um, I think it really depends on your business. So you, unless you're in the business of SEO tracking, <laughs> like farming traffic as a result, there's some underlying reason why you're doing that traffic. So that again, is that root cause analysis that I would recommend. Why are you trying to uh, increase uh, visibility through search engines? And that's where your KPIs come in. But it doesn't mean that those metrics aren't important. Uh, it can certainly test the effectiveness of your marketing strategy. So not so much of a KPI, but a metric that will help you in that build, measure, learn cycle. It's that part of that learn side of things, moving from measurement into learn. So the key performance indicators are more high level, bird's eye view of the health of your business or your project. 
whereas these other metrics that you're looking at. So if you have certain keywords that you've re recently um, bought, like through AdWords or something like that, or um, other search engine optimizations, those are, those are changes to either what it is that you're tracking or the substance of your website that either help or hurt. And it takes time to understand those trends. So coming up with a strategy internally to understand that data and track those trends, I think is important. But I think also as a strategist, you can ver get very lost in the mires of data. So I, I would always encourage, encourage people to get back up to the surface and understand the impact on the high level. Because if you're just tweaking and dialing in things at the very low level, it feels like you're doing something, but it may not actually have a, an impact on the most important things to your business. Um, it's not to say that those things aren't important. It's that it may not necessarily be the best priority or use of your time. Uh, next question from Nathan says, how do you convince executives to add or change tracking if they see it as overhead or preventing work from getting done? So I want to try to make sure that I understand this question. Okay, um, so in business, you can track a, a myriad of, of different things. Most businesses have some sort of internal goals. And as you saw in the intake process, uh, in the worksheet that I was showing you, the, the known profit percentages and um, other goals that a company has are really important. And we don't want to neglect those things. There was a lot of thought that went into those. So if anything, the KPIs that we come up with may be derivative from things that already exist. That's, that's always fantastic, but it doesn't mean that we can't change. So let's, let's put, play out a very basic example. If uh, the business is tracking, uh, you know, how are our profits? What is our customer satisfaction? Those are strong KPIs. Those are fantastic for monitoring the health of your business. But there's this little outlier nobody really understands why it's being measured or what impact that it has on the business. That's something that you should be capable of challenging. And it's not demeaning to an executive to be able to talk about that, but I think it's important to have uh, candor. So there's a, another book that you may want to read called radical candor is creating this relationship with uh, people that you work with. You can obviously talk to subordinates if you are a manager and you can certainly talk to your manager and your manager's manager. You don't wanna go behind people's back, but you wanna work as a cohesive team. So I think that's the secret sauce to trying to get the entire team's participation is asking this one simple question in a vacuum. How do we succeed and how do we measure that? If you're getting a lot of different answers from different people, just write them down. It doesn't make those answers wrong. But what it does is it demonstrates that if you don't have alignment across multiple people, then that could be detrimental because everybody's working on their own things. That's not a very effective way to be successful. You want everybody to be guided by the same beacons. And that's what the KPIs are meant to be. But you need to measure them. You need to have the responsibility of keeping tabs on it. Most businesses do measure their goals. And most businesses do have some form of KPIs. It's just, are they the right ones? Are they properly calibrated? Are they clear when somebody reads that data what that data means to the health of your business. And if not, that's what I mean uh, in terms of calibrating that. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Nathan. Any other questions? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, um, I, I think I'll uh, concede the rest of the time so people can relax or whatnot. Please do reach out. Um, start at unleash-technologies.com if you uh, want to get in touch with our, our organization. A big thank you to Nerd Summit for uh, making this virtual version of the presentation uh, actually work out. It's you know kind of weird being social like this, but it's fantastic for the opportunity. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Chad. We really appreciate it.
<laughs> Likewise.